you from God our Father and from Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in its sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you again. It's so good to see your lovely faces. Uh, as you know, we've been in, a, in our series that we started some weeks ago, and we called that series, What We Believe and Why. And we completed the what aspect of that, uh, because the Apostles' Creed, uh, is, we said, is a summary of what we believe, and it provides uh, just that perfect statement of faith summarizing our belief uh, as or our beliefs as Christians and uh, in a general sense if you may and we said part two of that uh, has to do with the fact that because we believe and the statement we made was we believe therefore we pray we believe therefore we pray so part two of, our, of that progression is the Lord's Prayer. And we've been dealing with the small catechism and allowing the small catechism to be our guide as we've worked our way through that series. If you would recall last week, uh, we continued with the Lord's Prayer and we dealt with the third petition of the Lord's Prayer. Um, and if you know anything about the Lord's Prayer, it consists of petitions. In fact, during our adult study time, we talked about how, uh, in fact, one of our members during an adult Bible class gave us a really beautiful uh, acronym, uh, ACTS, A-C-T-S. And he said, when you approach the Lord's Prayer, one of the ways to think about the Lord's Prayer is to put it within this framework of ACTS, A-C-T-S. And the A in ACTS uh, stands for adoration, okay? The C, confession. The T, thanksgiving. And the S, supplication, okay? So when you're praying the Lord's Prayer, uh, you are doing an act, is an act of prayer, okay? And in that act, you're giving adoration, you're confessing, you're giving thanks, and you're also uh, supplicating or giving supplication. And the word supplication may be a big, I don't know if it's a King James word, uh, but it simply means petition, okay? To supplicate, to, to ask God for something in humble adoration. And so this morning we want to continue because last week I also told you that when you think about the Lord's Prayer, uh, one of the best way to look at it is to juxtapose it next to the Old Testament uh, foreshadowing of that Lord's Prayer. And the passage that we talked about last week came from 2 Chronicles 7 and 14. And in 2 Chronicles 7 and 14, uh, the background I give you was the fact that uh, Solomon, the son of David, uh, was speaking to God, or rather God was speaking to Solomon, and after Solomon had dedicated the temple in Jerusalem, the Lord said to him, you've done a great thing, and it warms my heart to know that you love me this much. He said, but there is coming a time when the people will sin, when even you yourself, Solomon, will sin against me. He said, and on that day, when the people sin, this great temple that you've dedicated to me will be the place of prayer. This will be the place where the people can come and adore me and confess their sins and give thanksgiving and supplication. This will be the place where they can come and pray to me. And he said to him, he said, and if my people who are called by my name, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves Pray, turn from the evil ways. Then will I hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin. I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin. Do you hear the Lord's Prayer in this? Are you seeing that? Are you seeing that unfold? If my people, 
Okay, because in the Lord's Prayer, we say, Abba, Father, you are his children. And God sees you as his children. So when you cry, Papa, Daddy, Father, I love you. When your spirit cries, Abba, that's the greatest adoration that you can ever give him to say that you are my God, you are my Father, you are my Daddy Jesus, and I love you with all of my heart. That's why he said, uh, the, the Lord's Prayer said, uh, in the beginning it said, uh, and it just is escaping me here. <laughs> but the Lord's Prayer, it says, uh, it's it parallels. Uh, Second Chronicles 7:14, where when you, where he says, "If my people who are called by my name," and the Lord's prayer said, "Our Father," saying to God, "I am your people, I am your child, who are called by my name, will humble themselves." Okay, you're coming to Him in humble adoration and pray. What we said last week, there were seven steps to provoking in prayer. There were seven steps to provoking a move of God. And the first one we said was covenant. You have covenant with God. And because you have covenant with God, you have a right to come into his presence. You have a right to come to God and make petition and ask him to intervene on your behalf. Do you know how you obtain that right? You obtain that right. In, in John chapter 1 it says, uh, he says that he was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself and the word knew him not. He came unto his own and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right, the power, the authority to become children of God. And so he said you have that right by inheritance. And you obtain that because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Because Jesus did it on your behalf. And when he did it on your behalf, he applied that right to you. So that's why when we go to God, we don't go in our own name. We go in the name of Jesus. Because it is the name of Jesus that God recognizes as the name that is above every name. And at the mention of his name, the scripture says, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So we said the first thing is we have covenant. That's how we have that covenant. And then the second step is humility. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, will humble themselves. And then the third thing is pray. Will humble that, he said, I want you to come to me in humble adoration, but I also want you to open your mouth and pray. I want you to say something to me. I want you to talk to me. You can boldly come into the throne room of God where you can obtain grace in your time of need. He said, but I want you to talk to me. I want you to pray. And this kind of prayer we're talking about here is a prayer of petition. This is an ask. This is you coming with an itemized list of things you want God to work on in your life and on your behalf. This is you asking for God's intervention. Prayer here is different than seeking God's face. He said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, pray. And then he says, seek my face. He said, well, I'm already praying. Am I not seeking your face? He said, no, there's a difference. The difference here is this kind of prayer he's talking about, you're seeking his hand and not his face. He said, now, I want you to not just seek my hand, I want you to seek my face. I don't just want you to come to me and petition and ask me, but I want you to just, just want to be in my presence. Just love to be in my presence. I need some people who can just come to me and say, Lord, I just love you. I just want to spend time with you today. I know I have this itemized list of things I'd like you to work on, but you know what? I'm going to put that to the side for a moment, and I'm just going to love on you. I'm just going to adore you. I'm just going to allow you to just be my God, and I will be your child. I just want to be in your presence. This is what he means when he says, seek my face. This is fellowship with God. Seeking his face and not his hand. Seeking his presence and not his provision or power. He said my presence and not just my provision. 
my presence and not just my power. There's an interesting passage in the Old Testament, um, and I believe it's in Habakkuk, and it describes God coming down, uh, and, and the, the metaphor that the writer uses here is God is coming down from the mountain. And God is descending from heaven and his presence is settling on the top of the mountain. And in his analogy, he says, and his power is hidden in his presence. I'm going to say that one more time. His power is hidden in his presence. So what does that tell you? That tells you that if you want access to the power of God, you need to get where? In his presence. Because his power is concealed in his presence. His power is hidden in his presence. So if you're going to access the power of God that will work on your behalf, if you're going to access the power of God to heal your disease, if you're going to access the power of God to settle every controversy in your life, then you need to get in his presence because his power is concealed in his presence. And then step five, he said, is repentance. Seven steps to provoking a move of God in prayer. Step five, repentance. Turn from your wicked ways. That's what he said. He said, seek my face, but I just don't want you to seek my face. I need you to turn from your evil ways. Now, this is a hard one because we say, you know what, God? I'm not, I'm a good person. I'm a decent person. Until you come on Sunday and confess your sins, of course. <laughs> but you say, you know, I'm, I'm relatively good. People think I'm a pretty nice guy. So why is it that you're saying to turn from my wicked ways? Now, understand, he's not talking to unbelievers. He's talking to his people. He's talking to his children. And he says, turn from your evil ways. He's like, I don't, I don't get that. What he's talking about here, and I'm going to give you an analogy, to know to do good and not do it is evil. To know to do good and to not do it is evil. Okay? It's about the posture of your heart. It may not be that you have some sort of overt or sinister plan to do harm necessarily, but it's the little things when you don't stand up for the weak, when you don't tick up for the downtrodden or give to the poor, when you don't stand up for the voiceless or speak against injustice, he says, that is wicked. Unforgiveness is wicked. See, when you harbor unforgiveness in your heart and you just won't let that person go and you just won't let that thing go and say, but Lord, look at what they did to me. So that's what I'm talking about when I say, turn from your evil ways. Turn from your wicked ways. And then step six is agreement. Okay, I'm giving you seven steps that you follow in prayer that are laid out here in 2 Chronicles 7.14. Step one, covenant. Step two, humility. Step three, prayer. Step four, seek his face. Okay. Step five, repent. Turn from your evil ways. All right, step six, agreement. Unity precedes power. I'm going to say that one more time. Unity precedes power. The scripture says that they were all together on one accord in the same place on the day of Pentecost. And after they had prayed and the place was shaken, the Spirit of God descended upon them and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and they received power to be his witnesses, to do his will. But the first thing, before they received that power, before the Spirit descended upon them and filled them, is they were together in unity. There is power in agreement. You and I would not be able to accomplish anything in this community or in this neighborhood if we're not in agreement. We would not be able to go forward as a church and do what God has called us to be if we have this unity until we come together on one accord in unity and we're on the same page and we're saying the same thing and we're walking in lockstep and we have cadence and, and, and we have an understanding that this is not about us. Yes, my feelings may be hurt sometimes, but it's not about me. 
It's about Jesus. It's about, it's about his calling. It's about what he's called us to do as a church in this community. What is it? To reach our neighbors with the good news of Jesus Christ. That is our calling. That is our motto. That is our mission statement. Have you, have you seen it lately? To reach our neighbors for Jesus Christ. But we're not going to be able to accomplish that. We're not be able to do that until we're walking together in unity. And lastly, persevere. This is one of my favorites. Okay? So the steps are covenant. You need to have covenant. And you need to understand that you do have covenant, that you are his people, if my people who are called by my name. Okay, so when you approach God, approach God from the standpoint that, God, I'm your covenant child. That's what the Lord's Prayer said. Abba, Father, who art in heaven, he sees you as his children. And then approach God with humility. And then start to pray. Petition God. Seek his face. Repent. Turn from your evil ways. Make sure you have agreement. And lastly, persevere. Don't just stop there. Sometimes we say, but Lord, I've prayed four or five times and it seemed like you haven't answered me. It seemed as if I didn't get the answer I wanted. He did answer. May not have been the answer you wanted or you expected or anticipated. You say, Lord, I've been praying and believing God and asking for healing for so long. I've been asking you to send my wayward child home, that that prodigal will come home. And that's what this is about because in our gospel lesson this morning, we see the prodigal. The scripture says that when he came to himself, he said, wait a minute. I'm out here eating pig's food, and in my father's house there is abundance. And the prodigal said, I'm going to return to my father. He had to humble himself to do that and say, I'm going to come home where there is abundance in my father's house. But I'm saying to you, don't just stop there. Keep praying. Perseverance. Seek ask knock okay rendered in the original language the command here is to keep seeking keep asking keep knocking and someone give me another uh, acronym or acrostic once that says push okay push pray until something happens keep you got to push you got to persevere never give up remember the parable of the unjust judge. Do you remember that parable? The widow who came to the unjust judge and said, I need the inheritance and that my husband left for me because my husband passed away and left this stuff and they don't want to give it to me. And the scripture says he was unjust. He didn't rule fairly. But she kept, she kept coming. Every day she would meet him on the roadside. Every day she would come and tell the, magi the magistrate, I need to talk to the judge. I need justice done on my behalf. And the scripture says that it's not that he wanted or had the, you know, the motivation or the willingness to really give her what she needed. It's just that she wouldn't go away. <laughs> she will not stop. So he said, give her what belongs to her because this lady keeps coming back. She kept seeking, kept knocking, and kept asking. And he had to answer. And so in closing this morning, I encourage you to keep knocking, to keep seeking, and to keep asking. This is why we come week after week and we're praying to God. And we're praying and we're confessing our sins. And we're asking God to hear our prayer. And we're saying, God, if we got to come to you daily, if I have to come to you weekly, if I have to come to you monthly, I'm going to keep coming until you hear my prayer. I know I'm your child. I know you see me. I know you hear me. But I'm going to keep knocking in Jesus' name. Amen.